This is control. This is 100% control. He thinks marriage is all about control. And I'm sorry, that's not what marriage is about. It is not your job as a husband to control every aspect of your wife's life. This is insane and it's fucking abusive and you are wrong for engaging in that kind of behavior in your marriage. So chat, uh, some interesting news came out. Uh, basically, what was it yesterday or the day before? Something along those lines. I think it was a couple days ago. Uh, in regards to a popular uh, political commentator, I guess you would call him, like a right-leaning political commentator known as uh, Steven Crowder. And uh, apparently, like, for the past like year or so or like two years i'm not exactly sure of the timeline uh dude like basically was like getting a divorce and now normally i wouldn't really care to talk about this kind of stuff personally i think that these kind of family matters should be dealt with like privately right i kind of talked about this with like the chris situation with a lot of people speculating on like the cause of like the breakup of his marriage and stuff like that some people saying that because you know they became trans that was why their marriage fell apart never mind the fact that they split up long before they came out as trans or more specifically they came out as gender non-conforming but having said that a lot of people were speculating that hey uh, you know, that had something to do with it. And I was just like, look, you know, we don't know what the reason was for the split. Right. And so, uh, that's a private matter that should be dealt with privately. And so when you're dealing with things like divorce or the split up of families and stuff like that, that's normally what I believe is that it should be uh, private. Having said that we do love some good drama around here, chat. Let me get some ones in the chat. If you are like me, I'm willing, you're like, I'm willing to bet you're like me if you're watching the stream, but if you're like me and you love you some good goss, let me get a one in the chat. Uh, this guy did make this public, so now it's in the public conscious, right? And so let's go ahead and let's talk about it. But the main reason I want to talk about it is not necessarily because it's drama or anything like that, right? The main reason I want to talk about it is because like, I was looking at this and this dude has an interesting perspective on divorce that I'm just like... I was just kind of like, did he really say that? As a matter of fact, I don't even think I brought up the tweet that I wanted to show you guys. I tweeted something about this earlier today that I want to share with you guys. And I also saw another creator had a similar uh, take as mine. Let me see if I could find this tweet for you guys. Here we go. So I tweeted this this morning because I, I just, I watched this clip and I was kind of dumbfounded by it, right? So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Crowder's view on divorce is really bizarre. That's right. I said it. It's bizarre. This is so bizarre. A woman should need permission from her husband to get a divorce. So the husband can theoretically be like, yeah, I'm an abusive piece of shit, but that divorce you want, not going to happen. What? Am I missing something here? And a lot of people seem to agree with me in the replies. Like we have Bunny here. Let me actually zoom in a little bit so you guys can see these tweets a little bit better. We have a uh, Bunny Button here. I felt like he was saying... That if the state allowed it, he'd have her tied up in his basement instead of getting a divorce. Uh, that's what he meant, says Rora Pickles. Shout out to Rora Pickles, a friend of the channel. Uh, what else do we have here? I want to show another example. Uh, we have Christina Vina. I definitely walked away with that perspective. Like he wanted to keep her hostage. Like, bro, you both have to want to stay together. It's all or nothing, man. And yeah, exactly. The thing that a lot of people... Um, I, I don't think a lot of people realize, or like maybe just Steven Crowder here doesn't realize is that like marriage is like, it, I, I, I see a lot of people take that like, yo, you know, that's my wife. When people say that's my wife or, you know, a woman will say that's my husband. They, they talk about it. Like it's a possessive thing, right? Like you own this person, you are in possession of this person. And that's not what it is. A marriage is a partnership built on trust and love and intimacy right? So you don't own that person. You don't dictate the way that person gets to live their life, et cetera, et cetera. You're in a partnership together, right? And just like a business partnership can unfortunately fall apart and dissolve. So can a marriage. You obviously don't want those things to happen. Like, you know, obviously I'm a married man, right? And I'm in a very loving relationship with my wife. And, you know, the last thing I would ever want to happen was for our, our relationship to fall apart to the point of us getting a divorce. Um, but having said that, these things happen, right? It's unfortunate that they happen. Uh, I'm a very family-oriented person, so the last thing I would want is divorce. But, you know, heaven forbid something happened in our relationship where the relationship was not reconcilable, whether it was 
I did something wrong and my wife was unhappy about it, or, you know, she did something wrong and I was unhappy about it. And one of us wanted to split. We should have the right to do that. Right. Because if, if you're getting to a point where your relationship is not reconcilable, like what's the point of even continuing it? Right. The most important things in a relationship, like a marriage is like trust, love, and intimacy. And if you're not getting those things, if you're, the partnership isn't working, then what's the point of maintaining it? Right. But uh, anyway, uh, no, you're not wrong at all. Uh, his perception and the way he worded his response was extremely cringe and disgusting. I chose wrong. He said at one point, okay, dude, we'll get into that in a second. But I just I wanted to show you my original tweet before we dive into the video and some of the responses I got. Because I was honestly wondering, like, am I being uncharitable here? Am I listening to the words that are coming out of his mouth? But because I'm not a fan of Crowder, am I being unfair to him? And I didn't want to do that. So that's kind of why I put that tweet out there. I was feeling, uh, I was putting a feeler out there for responses to make sure like I'm not the only guy that feels that way. Right. And a lot of people seem to agree with me. I even seen right leaning people reply to my tweet and say, yeah, you know what? Like I like Crowder, but that was a pretty cringe thing to say. So anyway, uh, prior to that, when this news first came out, I put out this tweet, uh, with this video here that we're going to take a look at Steven Crowder is getting a divorce. No way, but this is going to tear his family apart. Oh, the humanity. Oh, right. It only sparks outrage when it's a trans person like Chris who does it right now. That was kind of a snarky tweet at the time when the news came out. Uh, but I really want to focus on this video and I want to focus on the statements that Crowder makes in this video because he has a very warped view of divorce, right? He has a very warped, and it sounds like a very controlling view of how so, how divorce should work. And so I kind of wanted to like share it with you guys. And I kind of wanted to discuss it with you guys. So I'm going to zoom in so the video is a little bit bigger. And we're just going to kind of chime in with our thoughts as we go along. So uh, without further ado, pa, 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 pa. play that shit. Here we go. Uh, I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck for going on years now. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset, to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse. Anthony Frazier Wrestling Entertainment says, I'm not getting the logic. If you're married and meet another couple, how do you introduce yourself without saying my wife or my husband? I'm not saying, maybe, maybe, there, maybe I was miscommunicating that. My apologies if that's the case. I'm not saying that when you meet someone and you're introducing someone to your spouse, you can't say, hey, you know, by the way, this is my wife or this is my my husband. Uh, or you could even use the term partner like uh, Miss Susie in the chat says. But there's nothing wrong with like saying that. What I'm saying is a lot of people take that like that phrasing of my wife and they interpret it as like you're in possession of that person. Like you almost in a sense own that person. And that's not what a relationship is. You're in a partnership together. You guys are working together in the relationship. So there's nothing wrong with when you introduce your partner to someone saying, hey, this is my wife or this is my husband or whatever. That's totally fine. But you have to understand that when you're saying that, you're not in possession of that human being. This is somebody you're in a partnership with. Does that make sense? Anyway, here we go. Abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. This is where it gets weird for me. Okay. This is, this is where I see a very warped view of mar like marriage and divorce uh in, in you know basically steven crowder's eyes here he's basically talking about how like you know my my wife wanted out of the relationship she did not want to be a part of this partnership this marriage anymore and so she decided to get a divorce from me and basically the way the law works where we live he's saying is that she can get a divorce without my permission she does not need my permission to get a divorce and like, it just seems really weird to me because as I mentioned in the previous tweet, what if you're in an abusive relationship, right? And like, you need to get out, right? You need, you need to get out of that relationship because it's an unhealthy and dangerous relationship to be in, uh, in the world, in the mind of Steven, Steven Crowder, from what I interpret from the statement, he thinks that if a woman wants to divorce her husband, that she needs his permission and consent to do so. Now think about that really quickly, right? I use the example of a woman who's in an abusive relationship. 
Do you think if a woman is in an abusive relationship and wants out and she needs permission from her spouse to get out of that abusive relationship, do you think said abusive person is going to grant them permission to get out of that relationship if permission is required? Of course not. That's a fucking stupid fucking concept. And I've seen some people point out to me on Twitter that, hey, that's the way divorces used to be. There's a reason why they're not like that anymore. Uh, What we're referring to now, and I actually looked into this, what Steven is referring to is what's called a no-fault divorce, all right? And what that means is that you don't have to necessarily have a reason for wanting out of the divorce. Like you don't have to say, well, they were abusive to me. So I want out or, you know, they promised to be a provider for me and they're not providing for me. So I want out or they were, uh, you know, unfaithful. There was infidelity in the relationship. So because they weren't, uh, faithful to me, I want out. You don't need a reason. You could just say, you know what? I just want out and just it, you just get out of it like that. That's it. And at this moment in time, if my research is correct, all 50 States in the United States allow no fault, uh, divorces. And Steven Crowder has a problem with that. He's basically like, I wanted to go back to the old way where my spouse needs my permission to get out of the relationship, which is just insane to me because there, I gave the example of an abusive relationship, but there were so many factors where a woman or not even just a woman, a man as well. This applies to men as well. There are several situations where a partner might want to get out of a relationship, whether it's abuse, maybe it was a situation where they were multiple times unfaithful to them, so they want out. Maybe it was a situation of, hey, as I mentioned before, uh, this person promised to be a provider to me. You know, I agreed to be, you know, a stay-at-home wife while they, you know, make the bread, and they're not really doing that, right? So, like, I'm kind of stuck in a bad financial spot, and I just need to get out and move on and do my own thing because this person is not you know, they're just not pulling their weight or, you know, whatever. There's various reasons why someone might want to get out of a marriage. And this concept of, oh, you should need my permission to get out. Absolutely not. That is insanely, insanely ridiculous to me. As somebody who's a very family oriented person, does it make me upset and kind of, does it suck to see that so many marriages nowadays end a divorce? Of course, you know, I, I'm not a fan of seeing that sort of thing, but having said that, like this, this notion that a woman should need permission from her husband or even the other way around, right. Or even like in a same sex marriage that, you know, one person should need permission from their partner to break off the marriage. Like, I'm sorry, but that's, that's just insane to me. Anyway, let's continue. It's been the most heartbreaking experience of my life. What I consider to be my deepest personal failure and Just so you know, my opinions on parenting and families have not changed. Mm. Um, I've always believed that children need a mom and a dad, that divorce is horrible. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad. I actually do. I actually do agree with him on that. Like divorce is a really horrible thing, especially when kids are involved, right? Uh, When kids are involved, like it's just such a messy thing. And like the kids are the ones that get the most messed up over it, right? It's a very emotional experience and... It, it, it just sucks. Like, there's no way to slice it. I actually do agree with him on that. Like, marriage, divorces are messy. Now, having said that, if you find yourself in a tough spot where you do need to get a divorce because the relationship you're in is unhealthy or something like that, do what you got to do, right? But having said that, it's just, they're messy, and it's, it's, it's really unfortunate when they happen, obviously. Nobody likes to see a family fall apart, obviously. And that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. See, that's a, that's a big thing for him. This is why this video was so weird to me. I understand like, again, like I think that these sort of things should be handled in private, but I understand that like, he's a public figure, you know, the news is going to get out there eventually. Maybe he felt the need to get ahead of it for one reason or another. And he does kind of explain that as we'll see in a little bit, um, I I understand like the need to like talk about it or whatever, but like, yeah, it's, it's dude, just divorces are messy. Divorces are messy. But this whole concept of like the man should have, she needs the man, the wife needs a man's permission to get a divorce. Like it, I, I, I just can't explain how, how silly of a concept that is to me. So for well over a year, uh, well over a year in the best interest, as well as physical safety of my children, we've decided to keep this issue private and to resolve it 
uh, privately with the appropriate attorneys, what have you, legal jargon. And all this one thing I want to be really clear about is certain. True North here is that my children are blameless, completely without fault. And so we decided to resolve these issues privately. I mean, yeah, of course. Like, I, 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 is there ever a situation where like the children are to blame for divorce? I would think that if there was ever a situation where children are to blame for a divorce, it's a very rare niche situation. Uh, I'd say nine times out of 10, it, of course, it's not the children's fault. As it's in their best interests, uh, both emotionally and physically to do so. Now, the other issue... Is Emmy in the chat says, what if he wanted a divorce and needed the wife's permission? That's a good question, Emmy. Would he be in favor of that? Right? He, he wants his wife to need his consent to break off the marriage. Would he be okay if it was the other way around as well? I, I don't know. That would, be, that would be a good question for Steven. Maybe tweet at him and ask him that. Is, and this is something that I've kept private for likely far too long. Um, many other people knew about this. Abredention in the chat says, I get icky, misogynistic vibes from this dude. I don't like to throw that term around too much personally. I feel like a lot of people get the misogynistic like label put on them where it doesn't fit, right? Just because maybe someone slightly disagrees with a take that involves women from someone and they're just like, well, you're misogynistic. That's why you would say something like that. And I, I don't think that's the case. What I will say is this. This sort of mindset on divorce does come off as like a misogynistic view to me. Like this concept that like, if you're going to divorce me, the husband, you need my consent to do so. I will say this take is extremely like, it, it gives me that vibe too. Oh, 100%. Behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, so what he's saying right here is there, there are people that knew about this because he said they were dealing with it privately, right? But he's saying that there are people who were privy to it that tried to use it against him. Now, I've seen a lot of confusion for people saying, like, what do you mean? Like, why would anybody use this against Steven Crowder? How could they use... People get divorces every day. How could you use a divorce against someone? I mean, first of all, we've seen Chris's divorce get used against him, uh, you know, very recently. You know, Chris's... Chris, uh, Mr. Beast's friend, Chris, right? Uh, so divorces can be used against public figures, but especially someone like Steven Crowder, who talks about like, you know, conservative family values and, you know, speaks out against divorce and stuff like that. When you have someone who speaks out against these sort of things very frequently and they themselves are getting a divorce, granted it wasn't his choice, but they're having a divorce. Like you can see how, you know, rival political commentators might use that against him. Right. And so for anybody who's like confused about what does he mean? Like people are blackmailing him and he trying to use the divorce against him. That's what he's referring to. You know, fellow political commentators, conservative political commentators who are looking at him preaching constantly against divorce. Right. And then suddenly it's like, Oh, well you're getting a divorce. Well, why are you speaking out against divorce when you're having one yourself? It's that sort of thing. Yeah. Let's continue. Leverage knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with... I mean, I understand, like, wanting the safety and privacy of, like, your kids. Don't get me wrong. Like, I 100% agree with them on that. Like, leave them out of it. But, like, at this point, he mentions his children so much in this video. It almost feels like he's using them as, like, a prop or a shield in some way. And I'm not really sure why. It's just weird. You know, again, I, I have no problem with him wanting to maintain the safety and privacy of his kids. I think any parent would want that, whether you're getting divorced or not. But it's just something about the way he keeps like bringing up his kids. It very much feels like using his kids as a shield. A am I wrong to feel that way in the way that he keeps mentioning them? Let me get some ones in the chat if you agree. The idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Steven has a lot. Uh oh, Candace Owens has entered the chat. Uh oh, this is where the spicy drama meme comes in, chat. We're getting to the spicy memes. Here we go. A lot going on. 
I guess is the best way to say it. He has a lot going actually, on. In that let me season. actually run that back a little bit. We're so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Steven has a lot going on, I guess is the best way to say it. He has a lot going on, and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their life. So she's kind of hinting that she's privy to some information that the public wasn't. This was back in January, right? And keep in mind, Steven said that they've been dealing with this divorce for a while, right? Like it's been like over a year or so, something along those lines. And like, she's hinting that she knows something that the public doesn't know about. And he's interpreting that as she knew about the divorce, and she was like basically slyly hinting that she was going to release information uh, about the divorce. Now, I don't know if that was what her intentions were, but I won't lie. I actually do agree with him on this point. It does seem kind of sussy. Like she was kind of like holding that over his head. Like, hey, I know something that you don't want me to know and I might put it out there, which, yeah, I mean, again, this is this is a private family matter, you know. I don't always like, or I really don't ever agree with Steven Crowder on like a lot of things. But having said that, um, this is kind of weird, right? This, this is a weird thing to do. If somebody's trying to keep a family matter private, like this is a pretty scummy thing to do. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation, not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know? See, so she, she's literally implying that she knows something. You know what I mean? You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, something should be said. Or maybe if I feel that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. Well, my children have a right to privacy. Now, some other uh, issues have been, uh, or I should say, uh, inferences have been more pernicious behind the scenes with demands and threats to use this information that they believe would be uh, so publicly embarrassing to me and my wife at a difficult time that it could be used, knowingly putting my children in harm's way. So to those self-styled Christians, conservatives, and allies, well, not in my book. Now, if you find yourself, I, I don't want to get into details, so this is going to likely be the only time I have to address this or want to address this. If you're asking yourself, hey, did X person or did Y person know? The answer is likely yes, which will be made alarmingly clear as this process of discovery continues. Uh, and it also, by the way, makes me that much more appreciative of those who did know about this and in understanding the best interests of my family, my children kept their word and used discretion. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Sincerely, I appreciate it. Won't forget it. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I loved a woman so much that I married her. A woman who, despite all of this, I still love as the mother of my children. And she wanted something else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out. And the law says that that's how it works. Now, of course... See, he's like, he's harping on that again. Like the... The law allows her to leave me, even though I don't want her to leave me, right? That's just so weird. That's just a very, it's, it's a very controlling way of looking at divorce. Nobody wants to have a divorce unless you're the one who's like on the receiving end of like an abusive relationship or something like that. Well, let's put it this way. Nobody goes into a marriage wanting a divorce, right? There might be circumstances that will come out later down the line where you're like, hey, you know what? I, I want a divorce. But like, you know, that the, there seem the, the, nobody goes into a relationship wanting a divorce at the end of it, right? And so I just think it's I I think this is really bizarre. This is a really bizarre way of looking at divorce that you should require the consent of your partner if you want out of the partnership. It seems like a very controlling way of thinking of it. Of course, look, I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case is that it's no one's fault but my own in that I picked wrong. And that's... Bro, that is like the most sly way of giving an insult to someone. Okay, he just said he, he loved this woman and he said he still loves this woman. 
But then he turns around and says he picked the wrong one. That might on the surface seem like a very minor comment, but that is an insult to someone you supposedly love. You picked the wrong one. You're referring to this woman that you married and you had children with as the wrong one. Like, holy shit. That's the kind of comment that if you don't want, like, let's say there's some skeletons in homeboy's closet. And he doesn't want those to get out. And the wife, the ex-wife has the ability to put those out. That's the kind of comment that would provoke, provoke a bitch to put that shit out there. Like, holy shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. That's some major shade. By the way, in case you guys didn't hear, you didn't catch it. It's a little bit of foreshadowing of something we're about to talk about a little bit later. I've seen some people in the chat alluding to it. We're going to get there. But anyway, let's continue. Certainly not the fault of my children. And uh, I will say that what's in the best interest of my children um, is not internet drama, speculation, certainly not blatant. Rasslin in the chat says uh, he sounds like a high school girl that refuses to accept being dumped. Yeah, kind of. He kind of does. You hit the nail right on the head with that one. He really does sound like that. Holy shit. Or veiled shakedowns or dragging their father or mother and i can't be clear on that enough or their mother through the mud and to anyone who tries it i'm no longer going to pacify capitulate or dan in the chat says how is that wrong if uh what if she's a crap mother uh work with so many divorced men i'm seriously tired of my brothers getting dragged in the mud uh where did he say she was a bad mother where did dan i have to ask you in the chat since you want to ask the question let me pose a question to you where did crowder say she was a bad mother where did crowder say she was a bad wife he didn't say any of those things right so where where are you even gathering this from what come on dude or Use side your brain. Step because i love them a whole lot more than i love you and I will continue to do whatever is necessary to protect my children. Discussing the divorce any further on social media or on this show or in any public space is not what's best for them. I'll be handling this through the proper legal avenues and channels available as a matter of record in which I have more than full confidence. So I'd ask that you understand the need for and uh, respect our privacy in what is obviously a pretty tough time. And I hope that none of this has to go any further than that. All right, so there's the statement from Steven Crowder. That's what Steven Crowder uh, had to say on the matter, okay? So obviously there was mention of Candace Owens and Owens in there. And Steven was suggesting that maybe Candace was hitting that, hinting that she knew something and kind of dangling it over his head as some form of like extortion to use against him. So Candace did respond to this. We have this tweet from the Surfs. If you thought the Steven Crowder story couldn't get any stranger, Candace Owens reveals that he was dropping into her Instagram replies. Here's something about me you're hyper focus on, or there's something rather. Uh, she's now inviting his ex to come on her show and set the record straight. So this is like gone from a, an announcement of a divorce from a very sad man to like now we have this clapback and it's full on drama between two political commentators. Let's take a look at this. You're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Things should be said, or maybe if I feel that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. Oh, well, my children have a right to privacy. He even sent me a retrospectively very flirty message thereafter on Instagram about how nice I looked on election night. Even oh, shit. Crowder was getting flirty in the DMs with her? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. oh boy! Even though I didn't respond to it. I owned Hillary Crowder's Instagram account, and I looked to see, and it turned out that she didn't follow Steven Crowder, and that Steven Crowder didn't follow her. He didn't follow anybody in her family, and she wasn't following anybody in his family. That was my aha moment. Clearly, there was some sort of a separation. Now Dude, so she was, snoo she was snooping on the Instagram to... Get the deets. Why is this guy in my DMs or whatever on Instagram being flirty when he's got a wife? All right, let me do a little bit of digging. Oh, shit. 
the wife doesn't follow the husband and the husband doesn't follow the wife and none of the family members follow each other. Something's up. She did a little bit of deducey of looking, a little bit of detective work. Something sussy baka. Now, I will not take that lightly, okay? I am not Hillary Crowder. I am not anybody in his family. I am not going to take somebody going onto his platform and alleging that I either harassed, threatened, or did anything that would put his children at risk. That is very serious stuff that he is saying. And so what I did this morning after this clip was sent to me is I contacted a defamation lawyer and I am sending Steven Crowder a cease and desist. And I'm going to demand a full-throated retraction to the idea that Candace Owens threatened him or extorted him. And that it seems to me, Stephen, that you really, for whatever reason, want to insert me into this narrative. Like there is just something about me that you are hyper focused on. I mean, let's be honest here a little bit. She knew what was going on. She may not have been told by someone. She kind of like was able to figure it out on her own with a little bit of detective work that she did via Instagram. Right. But like. She knew something was up and she was hinting that she knew something was up and it's a little bit sussy Baca to do what she was basically the clip we saw earlier. It's a little bit sussy. It's pretty sussy for sure. I'm not a Steven Crowder fan, quite the opposite. Okay. But I just gotta be real in the interest of being fair and charitable. That shit was pretty sus. And so I want to help you a bit. And really, I want to help your wife because you essentially just used your platform. Millions of people have access to your platform. She doesn't have the same. Uh, Uh, Pierre in the chat says tips are on what uh, people would uh, call very right leaning. Uh, But yeah, his take uh, was BS. I'd have to agree. That's what I was talking about, chat, earlier when I was kind of like... basically fishing for responses to see like if i'm the only one that interpreted what he said the way he did um i got people who are right leaning politically and they were like yeah dude that shit's fucking weird that shit's really fucking weird Uh, to insult her Uh, you you picked the wrong woman okay see that's what i'm saying is that that maybe some people would look at that and think it's just like a random like comment but like no that is an insult When you were referring to someone who was your wife that you claim you still love and is the mother of your children as picking the wrong one, like that's a slap in the fucking face. Like, holy shit. So here's what I would like to do. I would like to invite Hillary Crowder onto my platform because she doesn't have one and because her ex-husband apparently just used his to insult her. Oh, he picked oh, the wrong woman. I find that to be really despicable. So Hillary Crowder, if you are watching, you are more than welcome to come on my show and to talk about oh, what's shit. actually oh, going on. Bro, that was a total mic drop moment. <laughs> Former Mrs. Crowder, come on my show and air that ass out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. God damn. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. Let's move on to this now. Okay. I seen somebody in the chat saying uh, you can uh, you can hear him at the start say leak. Check out Steve Crowder is a bad actor YouTube video. Check it out. I don't know what you're referring to there, but I did see somebody say that he was alluding to stuff being leaked or whatever. There was indeed leaks. There was a video uh, that was leaked that we're going to take a look at here. uh, Put out by this person, Yashar uh, Ali. I got to be honest. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. My apologies if I didn't. But uh, the missus has put out some leaks. The missus has decided to respond to this stuff. The ex-missus, excuse me. And uh, we have video. We're going to take a look at the video. This is only a 20-second clip, so we're not going to look at this one because we got the full release video. Uh, Exclusive. I've obtained over three minutes of video of Steven Crowder being emotionally abusive towards his pregnant wife, Hillary. And I've seen the video. It's pretty bad. In a statement sent to me, her family says she hid the emotional abuse she was dealing with uh, for years. And here's the thing about emotional abuse. I know what a lot of people, when they think abuse, they think physical, like a woman's being, you know, battered and beaten and stuff like that. Let me tell you, sometimes emotional abuse will scar you far more permanently than physical abuse. I know that sounds crazy, but if you really think about how people deal with trauma and stuff like that, like 100% when you're dealing with like emotional abuse. It could harm you so much more, so much more uh, when you're dealing with uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, Race Lance in the chat says, yeah, but lowering yourself to drama farming is really uh, winning you points though. Pot uh, calling the kettle black. Race Lance, you are 
criticizing a drama channel for covering drama. Who's the bigger idiot here? Hold on, hold on. Retard break. I need a retard break. Give me a retard break for like two fucking minutes, okay? I can't keep listening to fucking retards. That's like going to TMZ and being like, how dare you talk about celebrity gossip, you disgusting people. It's like, yeah, that's kind of what they do. If you don't like that kind of stuff, why would you partake in that kind of con It doesn't make sense, all right? You look like a fucking idiot here. You could either watch just like the rest of us, or you can leave if you don't like this kind of stuff. It It's really that simple, honestly. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, but like I was saying, like emotional abuse could be so much worse tra trauma wise. Emotional abuse could be so much worse a lot of times than physical abuse. I mean, obviously physical abuse is bad. Don't get me wrong. But the emotional scars that are left on someone from emotional abuse could be just as bad, if not worse. Um, so to the family of Hillary uh, Crowder says she spent years hiding her husband's emotional abuse from her family, that he lied about the circumstances around their divorce and that he wasn't present for the birth of their twins. Holy shit. We're not going to take a look at the full statement because it's, it's, it's a pretty big statement. Not going to lie. I will link it in the chat for you guys. If you guys want to check it out. And for those of you guys watching as a YouTube video, I'll try to remember to put it in the pinned comment or something like that. If I forget it, somebody in the comments, let me know and I'll, I'll add it there. Uh, two days ago, Steven Crowder, Crowder, Crowder excuse me, spoke about his divorce for the first time. Before he did, he informed his wife's divorce attorney. As my report reveals, his wife's attorney asked him not to speak about it. Crowder did it anyway. Okay. Here's the full statement from the family of Stephen Crowder, soon to be ex-wife Hillary. Her family only issued this statement after Stephen spoke about uh, their divorce against Hillary's wishes. Uh, the statement is detailed and alleges years of abuse. So we'll read this part uh, since it's clipped up as part of this thread. Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system in Michigan, and is focused on taking care of her young children. She is not pregnant at the time uh, that we speak about her divorce becoming public or misleading statements made by Stephen about the relationship. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Stephen's mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from friends and family while she attempted to save their marriage. She was the one who was asking to work on their relationship to keep the marriage intact. Uh, for their unborn children. In June of 2021, Stephen left their home to pursue elective surgery. Uh, Hillary urged him to get help he needed, the help he needed to address the abuse uh, with the hope that the marriage could be saved and they could peacefully leave together as a family. Instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during the birth of their twins. After the birth, Stephen bought a townhouse and left their home permanently. Hillary was unaware that Stephen had hired a divorce attorney and asked his assistant to cut Hillary off financially. There is significant documentation substantiating these claims. We hope that Stephen will cease speaking publicly about these personal matters in an untruthful manner. We also look forward to there being full transparency in the legal process so there is fairness and accountability for the actions that cause the divorce and to ensure the outcome is what is in the best interest of the young children. So they're basically saying that the way he's describing the marriage and the breakup of the marriage, he's lying. He's not being honest with his portrayal of the events, right? That's what they're saying. Uh, so that's this thread here, but we have the video and we're going to take a look at the video here. Here's the video. Steven Crowder yelling at his eight month pregnant wife caught on video. This is ring camera footage from their home. All right. So we're going to take a look at this. And, uh, I just got to say like, this is definitely a form of like emotional abuse. And he comes off as somebody who's very controlling. Like his goal is not to have a mutual partnership with his spouse he wants to control his spouse and you'll see that very quickly so without further ado pa, 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 pa. play that shit here we go i drew a boundary i drew a boundary no no you just did you just did it i drew a boundary and abusive and cruel you were not taking the car because if you so apparently like she needed to take the car because he was telling her he needed things like she, he needed her to go to the store and buy things, but he wouldn't let her take the car to do it. Like he wanted her to take an Uber. And so like this became like an argument and I understand like arguments happen in like marriages and relationships, right? Like you're not in like a real true committed relationship, unless you've had an argument or two. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. 
like in, in a in a marriage you will have arguments like my wife and I, we've been married since 2013 and we've had quite a few arguments like along the way and things do get heated for sure. But like, this is not your typical like argument. This is control. Like he's trying to control every aspect of her life. Refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. Wait, 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 wait. Did you, did you guys catch that? Hold on. Let me run that back. Because you refuse to do wifely things. So he's very much one of those like, you need to know your role as a wife. And if you don't do the things that you need to do as a wife, then I'm going to dictate what you get to do. What kind of shit? I could not imagine having a controlling relationship with my wife like that. I, 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 I genuinely could not imagine that chat. Like my wife, you know, she goes out to dinner sometimes with her family and I'm like, Hey, have fun. I might joke about bring something back for me. She'll go out to dinner. Uh, she'll go, you know, to theme parks with family and stuff like that. Sometimes she goes on full on vacations with her family. I'm just like, Hey, you know what? Have fun. Right. I, I'm not, I'm not your keeper. Right. I'm not, your, I'm not your slave driver or anything crazy like that. I'm your husband. You know, I'm here to love and support you. And if you want to do something with your life, Right. I don't control you. I think the only time I would ever like my wife, for example, she, let's say she wants to go out to dinner or a movie or something like that with her family. And we already had something planned that it's like, hey, babe, we, we already had something planned tonight. That's the only time I would step in and say, Lord, no, you probably shouldn't do that. We already had plans unless what she wants to do is more important Then yeah, we can make an exception. But if we had something pretty planned, it's like we already planned this. So you can't do that. We got to do this thing instead. But other than that, like I. I, I have no interest in controlling every aspects of my wife's life. That is not my job as a husband. Okay. My job is to love her. My job is to care for her. My job is to support her. And it's a mutual partnership as part of the marriage. Okay. I do not dictate and control what my wife does with her life, nor would I ever want to do that. Wife with things, then I will go pick up the groceries. There are no groceries. I have to Wood pellets. My grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. Today. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect me? Yes. How do you man? I'm a man. You see the love of us. No, no. How do you man? No, you're not taking the car. You are not taking the car. Then I will ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not about Steven. Give it an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. They own a car. Let me run that back real quick. It's not about Stephen. Give it an Uber. They own a car that she is capable of using. Okay? And because she didn't do, quote, wifely duties, he won't let her drive the car. He told her to get a fucking Uber. Right? Like, that's just insanely unreasonable, chat. Again, this is not, this is not a mutual partnership between two partners in a marriage this is control he is trying to control her and th this i know a lot of people would look at this and be like oh this is just an argument between you know two partners in a marriage no this is a this is control and this is abuse period okay steven i can't Do, feeling some constraints steven. like i can't steven. go I, listen to me listen to me you want to walk out right now listen to me i can't go to the gym i can't go to my parents I can't call my friends. I can't. Go, I can't be home. You're gonna take the car and leave me here, Hillary. Just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. What is this? Like, I want you to do these things for me. Go pick up these things at the store for me. But don't take the car because I want to be able to. I want to be able to be free to do the things that I want, right? If I want to go to the gym, if I want to visit my parents, all these things that he listed, I want to be free to do what I want, and I need the car to do that. But I also want you to do your wifely duties and pick, get an Uber to do it, so I can, so I can have my freedom. But you don't get your freedom, right? This is nuts, chat. This is nuts. Nova Crane in the chat says, "Tipster, if this is how he treats his lady, I can't imagine what kind of." I don't want to speculate on how he treats his kids. Okay, I, I see where you're going with. I don't want to speculate on how he treats his kids. I'm not going to do that. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. <laughs> I, I, Do you understand the difference between my life being sexy? You can literally see the emotional distress all over her about like, and keep in mind, like she's pregnant at this time, right? 
when you're dealing with like emotional distress and like this kind of abuse and stuff during a pregnancy, that could have serious negative impacts on the pregnancy, right? And you can literally see her getting emotionally frustrated and distressed over this stupid argument over a car that's literally only meant to be condescending and controlling of his wife. Discipline. The only way out of this is discipline and respect. The only way out what does this mean? It's this is control. This is 100% control. Steven Crowder does not know how to properly act in a marriage. He thinks marriage is all about control. And I'm sorry, that's not what marriage is about. It is not your job as a husband to control every aspect of your wife's life. This is insane and it's fucking abusive and you are wrong for engaging in that kind of behavior in your marriage and thinking that's acceptable. It's discipline or respect. If the only way out of it is we're at an impact. He already did pass. Good. Because you can't have any discipline or respect. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Wow. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, you give up so Steven? easily. I, I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline or respect. And you said, then we're at an impact. Steven, no, we are at an impasse. Okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your abuse is sick. You're she labeled it right. She says, your abuse is sick. It's abuse. I know, like I said, I know, I understand a lot of people. I understand a lot of people would look at this situation. This is just an argument between a spouse. This isn't, this isn't abuse, right? But I'm sorry. I disagree. I think that if you are basically maintaining your marriages, if you have some like level of control, again, he's acting like he has possession of his wife. Like his wife is an object that he possesses and he gets to control every aspect of their life, right? And that's that's not relationships like this are not about control. It's not about controlling every aspect of your spouse's life. That is abusive. Okay? It it just is. I'm sorry, but it just is. Watch it. Watch it. Fucking watch it. Uh Sierra in the chat says tipster Dan in the chat uh thinks steven is not being abusive well then dan is a fucking retard hold on hold on retard break i need a retard break that's all i can say about that honestly i'm gonna let go i'll get what you need to get and i i need some space we need to just talk and baby for a little bit okay i love you i love you very much i don't love you that's the big problem i've never received love from you and the fact is when i go look i need you to wait what did wait what did he say he was so she said I love you very much and he responded with I don't love you. What the f I'm sorry. Let me make sure I hear I don't want to be uncharitable here. Did did I hear that right? Did it, no, don't time out Dan. If he just because he's being a retard doesn't mean we're not going to give him the right to be a retard. He can be a retard in chat all he wants, okay? As long as he doesn't do something that breaks the rules, let him be a retard all he wants. Hold on, hold on. Retard break. I need a retard break. All right. I want to make, I don't want to be uncharitable here. I want to make sure I heard that right. Here we go. Okay. I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never. I don't love you. That's the big problem. What? That's weird. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need to do A, B, C, and D, just be disciplined about it. You go, no. But I love you. Wait, this this is literally control. Listen to what he's saying here. And the fact is, this is this is his words. I'm reading his words on the screen. I'm listening to him verbally say them. He says, and the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D. Okay, that's what he says. Listen to the next part. When I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D. You just be disciplined about it. You go, no. You just need to be disciplined about it. This is control. This is fucking control. This is not how a marriage operates. If I treated my wife like this, I would expect her to leave my fucking ass. Because this is control, this is abuse, and this is fucking unacceptable. No wonder she left his ass. No. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. It's not fair and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in the past. Become someone. Let's see, 
day in and day out worthy of a wife worth no matter the wife. He's literally telling her, become a worthy wife. He's telling her that she's unworthy of being his wife. No wonder she fucking left him. He's a piece of fucking garbage. Oh, shit. You can shut the fuck up, bitch. I, I don't think I've, I don't think I could ever be in a situation where I would get so mad at my wife that I would tell her she's unworthy. Oh my, what the fuck? I didn't say the one. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not gonna engage, I'm not gonna engage anymore. I'm gonna go, I'll get text me what you need, I'll get you what you need. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna Are you committed enough to do those things? Like that. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and committed to that. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm gonna just walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs take? Don't you take take that in? As Crowder's head inside, Stephen gets angrier and angrier, and by his own admission screams, I will fuck you up at his pregnant wife Hillary, who then flees their home. Okay. We unfortunately don't see video of that, so I don't know if that's part's true. You'll have to take that part with a grain of salt. But like, Jesus Christ, chat. Like, it's no wonder to me why after seeing that video, why she left him. The guy's like a piece of garbage. And he literally wants to control every aspect of her life. And I'm sorry, as I've said multiple times throughout this, that is not the way that you behave in a marriage. Like if you if you treat I feel like if you treat Pretty much most women, you know, like that in a marriage, they're going to leave you. Nobody's going to want to put up with that shit. So I don't blame her. And then I just think, again, I have to reiterate this point. I think his view of divorce and this whole, like, you should require permission, right? You should require permission from your spouse to get a divorce. I think that's insanely, that that's a trash take, all right? Like, no, if you are in a relationship that is abusive, whether it's physical or verbal or emotional or whatever, or, you know, whatever the case may be, if you're in a relationship that you don't want to be in for whatever reason, like you should be able to get out of that relationship and you shouldn't require like the permission of your spouse in order to get out. That is insane. And there are so many situations where that is absolutely unacceptable. And we're talking, we're dealing with someone who has like literal fucking caveman brain. If they actually believe that that's the way that d a divorce should be handled. It's totally a ridiculous take to have.